The five types of bridges are known as arch, suspension, cantilever, beam, and truss. Arch bridges are one of the oldest types of bridges. Instead of pushing straight down, the weight on an arch bridge is carried outward along the curve to support each end. The natural curve of the arc reduces tension throughout the bridge. Suspension bridges are the most expensive to build, but can span 2,000 to 7,000 feet farther than any other bridge. This bridge uses ropes or cables from the vertical suspender to hold the weight of the bridge deck and traffic. A cantilever bridge, similar in appearance to arch bridges, supports their load not through vertical bracing but through diagonal bracing. They often use truss formation both below and above the bridge. Cantilevers are horizontal structures supported only on one end. The outer cantilevers have counterweights at the ends to maintain the balance throughout the bridge. The truss bridge is designed with a series of triangles. The tension on a truss bridge is pulled outward than in. The most common designs of truss bridges are the king posts and queen posts, which differ based on the position of the beams. Truss bridges are very common and have a sturdy design. The final bridge, the beam bridge, is the simplest kind of bridge. It is a very basic type that is supported by several beams of various shapes and sizes. They can be inclined or V-shaped. The three main types of truss bridges are the Howe, Pratt, and Warren. These bridges are significantly different in structure and appearance, which means that they also handle compression and tension differently. The main types of roads are deck, pony, and through. Through goes through the bridge and the deck is below. These are the ways to transport your vehicle across the bridge. The four forces involved in bridges are tension, compression, twist, and shear. In order to complete my bridge, a set of processes were followed. The first thing to do was design the bridge. Initially, the design was made on Vectorworks. Once composed, the same design on Vectorworks was transferred to the West Point Bridge Design Program. This allowed for testing of the bridge electronically, where I could apply different amounts of pressure in order to determine the best design. Finally, I used the information from West Point in order to determine the size of the wood used when building the bridge, and began to assemble my bridge that resembled my vector works design. In order to make a more efficient bridge, I would need to make the bottom stronger. Poor assembly of the bottom of my bridge led to a less successful outcome when tested. As a correction, I would assemble a sturdier bottom and possibly use a thicker wood to make it stronger and more efficient. 